This is Ukraine, and it has dominated international headlines for nearly half a year now. That makes sense with, you know, an ongoing war. But did you know while Ukraine looks like this today, it could have looked very different. Or maybe a better way of putting it is there could have been multiple Ukrainian states on the map. Current events, and by that I mean war, have resulted in over 9 million border crossings from Ukraine, sparking off Europe's largest humanitarian crisis since World War II. However, there was a time not so very long ago when hundreds of thousands migrated east. To be precise, 22.4 million Ukrainians could be found within the former Russian Empire as of that country's 1897 census. Now, the vast majority of these were in Ukraine proper, but some 1.2 million, attracted by the promise of free land, ventured elsewhere. They initially settled in areas such as Kuban, which borders the Black Sea, but continuing further east would establish settlements in the Volga region, southern Siberia, and even on the very fringes of the Russian Empire along the border with China and Japan. And while many of these people assimilated with the Russian majority, in more than one instance, they retained their own language, traditions, and cultural identity, in effect, establishing little Ukrainian outposts within Russia. These so-called wedges, as they were often called, include Raspberry Ukraine, Yellow Ukraine, Gray Ukraine, and last but not least, Green Ukraine. It's that time again to remind people to go ahead and hit the like button. As always, I find that just asking people to do so helps our videos do a lot better. So, if you're interested in more videos like these, it's a quick thing you can do to help them out. Starting in the west and working our way east, we have Raspberry Ukraine. And yes, Raspberry is technically a color, I looked it up. Although, to be honest, if we're looking at the flag of the Kuban People's Republic, isn't it more of a magenta or a violet? This kind of reminds me of something else. Fundamental fact that Azure, we have Azure, the Azure Digital Twin Service. This very rich cloud infrastructure in Azure. Anyway, the geographic region of Kuban, located in the North Caucasus, actually contained another country of sorts and historical region within it, Circassia. These lands were eventually settled by the semi-nomadic Cossacks, a process that intensified during the late 1700s when the Black Sea Cossack and Don Cossack hosts were relocated to the area to help strengthen Russia's southern border. In time, they were eventually joined by Russian, Ukrainian, and Armenian settlers. Following the February Revolution, which actually took place in March 1917 for my Gregorian calendar users out there, Russia was then still using the Julian calendar, a number of Kuban Cossacks returned from the First World War to protect their homeland from what they believed was an inevitable Turkish invasion. Rather, what they got was a Bolshevik coup that November. And following this, the Kuban Rada, or Supreme Governing Council of Kuban Cossacks, declared it would retain control over the region. Not ignoring an attempt by some at establishing the very short-lived Kuban Soviet Republic, a wholly independent Kuban People's Republic was proclaimed on January 28, 1918. A few days later, a resolution was passed that aimed to federate the republic with Ukraine. This, however, never came to be, and by 1920, Bolshevik forces had overtaken Kuban, despite the republic having sent a delegation to the 1919 Paris Peace Conference, where it had received de jure recognition from a number of states, including the Ukrainian People's Republic, the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic, the German Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Democratic Republic of Georgia, and the mountainous Republic of the Northern Caucasus. According to a Soviet census taken in the mid-1920s, about 55% of the Wedge's population still identified as Ukrainian. However, this changed significantly over the ensuing decades, and the area is almost now entirely Russified, with less than 2% still identifying as Ukrainian as of 2010. Next up, we have Yellow Ukraine. Named after the distinctive color of the steppe along the mid to lower reaches of the Volga, Ukrainian settlement in this part of the Russian Empire began from the second half of the 17th century onwards especially around Atsurakan, Volgograd, Saratov, and Samara. These settlers coexisted with Volga Cossacks, Volga Germans, and Mordvins, a now obsolete term referring to the Erzia and Moksha peoples. However, 
Unlike the other wedges, no independent political movement formed in Yellow Ukraine after 1917, likely owing to the area's largely mixed and dispersed population. Centered around the city of Omsk, Grey Ukraine spanned what is today southern Siberia and northern Kazakhstan. By 1897, Ukrainians made up roughly 7.5% of the population in Akmalinsk Oblast. This number continued to grow with the Russian government relocating Ukrainians from the Kilm region during World War I, then occupied by Germany. Austro-Hungarian prisoners of war, including Ukrainians from Galicia and Bukovina, would also find their way to the wedge. Following the February Revolution, various Ukrainian political organizations emerged in Omsk, Tomsk, Slavgorod, Kurgan, Bisk, Kainsk, and so on. From July 30th to August 6, 1917, the first Ukrainian Congress of Siberia took place in Omsk, which created a representative body of local Ukrainians, the main Ukrainian Council of Siberia. A year later, on August 11th through August 13th, 1918, a second Congress took place which demanded self-government for Siberian Ukrainians. During the Russian Civil War, the Ukrainians of the Grey Wedge organized a number of military units, which fought alongside the White Army, a collective name for anti-Bolshevik forces then operating under the provisional all-Russian government. However, following the Bolshevik victory, these units were dissolved. A 1926 Soviet census showed that roughly 1 million Ukrainians lived in the Grey Wedge, making up about 40% of the total population. This percentage likely increased in 1939-1941 when a large number of Ukrainians were deported from western Ukraine. Ukrainian refugees were also evacuated to the wedge following Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union during World War II. In the 1950s, however, migration from other parts of the Soviet Union as part of Nikita Khrushchev's Virgin Lands campaign greatly altered the region's demographic makeup, and by 2010, just 2.7% of Omsk Oblast identified as Ukrainian. Although, that's still nearly 100,000 people. It's not easy being green, and that certainly was true for the last wedge we'll be talking about. Green Ukraine. Actually, if you haven't already seen it, our very first video on the channel was an in-depth look into the history of Green Ukraine and the Far Eastern Republic. So check it out. But if for whatever reason you don't want to watch it, Green Ukraine, in brief, was an unrecognized state located in the Russian Far East. Wedged, huh? Between China and the Pacific Ocean and centered on the Amur River, Ukrainians made up roughly 15% of Primaskaya Oblast's population in 1897. But, with the establishment of the Trans-Siberian Railway in the early 1900s, over 14,000 settlers were moving to the area per year. Following the October Revolution and outbreak of the Russian Civil War in 1917, an all-Ukrainian Congress of the Far East was convened near Vladivostok. A second Congress, held in January 1918, proclaimed Green Ukraine part of the Ukrainian People's Republic back west, despite it being separated by a continent. That idea was scrapped, and a third Congress met that April, officially proclaiming Green Ukraine an independent state. We also got these two proposed flag designs, so, you know, let us know down in the comments below which is your favorite. Things didn't last long, however, and by June 1923, Bolshevik forces were fully in control of the territory. As a reminder, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to go ahead and hit the like button. I also highly recommend subscribing and hitting the bell icon as well, so as to be notified when new videos are released.